This lecture is about standing wave patterns in physics. So far, all of the waves that we've talked about have actually been traveling waves. A traveling wave is a wave where the maxima and minima move continuously through the material they're in. So if you look at any one point in the material of the wave, that one point is going to be oscillated completely by the wave as the wave moves through it. There's no part of the material that doesn't oscillate as the wave moves through it, and the wave moves continuously through the material. The new pattern we're talking about in this video is a standing wave where the maxima and minima stand still in place and do not move. The wave oscillates by flattening out and then achieves the maxima and minima again. So you can see in the animation on the right, that is an example of a standing wave, and you can see how it's different from the traveling wave. Its maxima and minima oscillate up and down, but there are also certain points on the wave that actually do not oscillate at all, they just stay in place. This seems like a pretty subtle difference, but standing waves are really key to understanding a ton of stuff that happens in physics. Standing waves are actually the result of the superposition of two traveling waves with the same wavelength and frequency moving through each other. As their amplitudes add together following the rules of superposition, they produce a single standing wave. Here the blue and red traveling waves are moving through each other and adding to produce the black standing wave oscillating up and down. This pattern is going to be essential to understanding everything else that happens in this series on standing waves. You have to understand that a standing wave is really just the superposition of two traveling waves moving through each other like this. So I would honestly take just another second to observe the pattern that you're seeing here and make sure you understand how that standing wave is forming. It's just the sum of the amplitudes of the two waves moving through each other following the rules of superposition. All standing waves share certain properties. Nodes are point on the standing wave that do not move at all. This is where destructive interference is always occurring between the two traveling waves, making the standing wave. So at every node, that's the exact point where the two waves are canceling each other out to produce a total amplitude of zero. So those nodes do not oscillate at all. The material in the nodes of a standing wave does not oscillate up or down at all. It just stays in place. Antinodes are the points on the wave that move the most, so the places where it reaches its maximum and minimum displacement are the antinodes of the wave. The wavelength and amplitude of a standing wave follow the same pattern as a traveling wave. Sometimes students can get a little confused by the wavelength and assume that the length is just the distance between two nodes, but it's still the length of one complete wave pattern going all the way up and then all the way down and then back to where it started. So that purple line shows the full wavelength of this standing wave. And the amplitude is just from the center point to the maximum point, not from one extreme to the other extreme. So not from the very minimum bottom of the wave to the very top of the wave. The period of a standing wave is the amount of time an antinode takes to go from one extreme to the other and back. The frequency is the number of these repetitions completed every second. This is another really central fact about a standing wave. It has the same wavelength and frequency as the two traveling waves that make it up. So if you observe how many complete traveling waves pass by a certain point in one second, that's exactly equal to how many oscillations the standing wave makes in one second. So the period and frequency of the two traveling waves are equal to the period and frequency of the standing wave. If I count the total period for the standing wave, the time it takes to oscillate from the top to the bottom and back, I can count one, two, three, four. So this seems to have a period of about four seconds. And if I watch at any one point that the traveling wave is moving through and count one, two, three, four, that's the time the traveling wave takes to complete one full motion through that point. Because a standing wave has both a wavelength and frequency, we can also talk about it having a velocity in quotes, because the velocity of a wave is equal to wavelength times frequency. And when we talk about the velocity of a standing wave, we really mean the velocity of the traveling waves that make the standing wave up. We can use these interchangeably because the traveling waves have the same wavelength and frequency as the standing wave. So because the standing wave is standing, obviously it's not actually moving at say three meters per second, but it can still have a velocity 
because when we talk about velocity, we can really be referring to the traveling waves that make it up. So as an example problem, we can ask if the period of this standing wave is four seconds, what is its velocity? I can see that because this total length is eight meters, the wavelength is gonna be four meters because that total length is two complete wavelengths. The period is four seconds, which means that the frequency, which is always one over period, is equal to 0.25 hertz. So the velocity is wavelength times frequency, which is equal to one meter per second. So even though the standing wave is not actually moving from left to right, we can still describe it as having a velocity of one meter per second because it has a wavelength and a frequency. So that's the intro information that you need to know about standing waves.